Hi, I'm Rob and I lead the materials division at Arrival. We're here in our first micro factory in Bicester where we are building cells to manufacture the composite panels for the assembly line. As you can see behind me, um, those cells are taking shape. So we've moved into a conventional warehouse. We haven't made any uh, significant changes to the structure. Power drops came in six weeks ago and the cells are operational, so we can move at incredible speed. So if we um, go around and into the cell, I can show you a little bit about how it works. So the raw material comes in off a roll. As that material comes through, the software, the factory software, is indicating to the machine just in time exactly what we want made out of that piece of fabric. So actually, the machines are incredibly responsive because they're being driven by our software. So we can make different components almost instantaneously and the factory reconfigures according to need. The fabric comes through, it's cut to shape. The end effector here collects the pieces of material and then it deposits those in a stack as what we call a kit and that kit forms the foundation of the moulding process. Everything that runs through this production line has to be utilised. All of the waste material that comes off here is collected and is reprocessed back into a material that we can use in our body panels. We've gone from a kitting step to a moulding step. Now, we have developed solutions for the materials, the moulding process and the mechanisms of moulding to achieve a low capex, light footprint manufacturing concept in a warehouse. It's a really fundamental part of the, the process, how these steps come together without having to invest in heavy presses, heavy machinery and um, all of the capex implications and complications that come with doing that. So the factory is very versatile and as you can see the, the moulds are on static tables but it's only a matter of time before they're replaced with AMRs. And in fact, AMRs are fundamental to the microfactory story because it allows us to configure cells however we see fit and the AMRs provide that linkage. So the AMR will bring the kit from the kitting cell into the moulding cell. The moulding cell will, will carry out the consolidation cycle and from here we'll take the moulded part into the trimming step. So with everything we're doing, the goal is to try and keep the tooling cost as low as possible and the process is as dynamic as possible. As parts are coming through, we're learning how those parts need to adapt and evolve to improve, say, fit and finish on the vehicle or ergonomics, gaps and tolerances, stuff like that. Now, the way we're approaching all of our tooling, jigs, fixtures, processes, it, it allows us to make changes very fast um, and um, without significant cost. Now, the technology cells, the, the factory itself, it has to keep up with that process. It has to be able to adapt and change. That's where the AMRs come in, but also how the footprint of these cells come in. So building everything on a on grid-based architecture and also understanding how the cells can adapt and change using common robotics, for example, common systems of interaction in our robotics, common software platform, all of these things help to drive an extremely agile approach. So you can see with this cell, what we've tried to do is get as much utilisation out of the footprint of the cell as possible and avoid tool changeovers. It's a, it's a big challenge for manufacturing. Jigs and fixtures are mounted on A-frames which are rotating so the robot is in full utilisation, jigs and fixtures are in full utilisation and we get maximum throughput with the minimum footprint possible. So if we go in, you can see this kind of scale of this cell and the scale of the robot. A lot of what we're doing is to try and standardise these robots and the processes that we, that we use and the interactions between the robotic elements and the software within the cell. So all of this is modular. The parts and the robots and the process, they work together in harmony. It's not like a conventional production line where each robot carries out a part of the sequence of events. Actually here, with a tool changer, one robot can carry out many functions. If I walk around here, I can show you an example of a part that's just been trimmed. Now, typically, this is where a part is finished. The trimming process is the last step in the sequence of events. But in some cases, actually, the part requires assembly, um, either to another composite panel or to a metallic or other structure. And that's where we go um, onto the next cell to see the assembly process. So this is the last cell, the last stage in the composite part production. The robots behind working with tool changes allow us to go from single panels to complex 
multi-part assemblies that are ready for assembly onto the vehicle. So the composite parts, they come off the production finished. It's a really important part of this because it's about how we are able to distribute manufacturing. We don't have to install the big baths that you would expect with paint lines, um, with conventional metal stamp body systems. We can move into a warehouse and have a factory up and running in a matter of months or even weeks. And it gives us that agility that's so important to our engineering and design approach.